Okay, I guess we're going to start here. On the right-hand side is the backbone melody of Between the Lines, and you can see it's only five notes. And so what we wanted to do is take our voices, which started on the E, and we wanted to bump it up a semitone and turn it into the F. Duh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for Change, Part 45, Transience. In today's episode, we entered by reflecting that we have a lot of ideas suggested by our projects in play. Um, Equanimity suggests itself for surfing among and choosing from these many ideas on which ones to make real. And one of those things is we discovered a delightfully awkward way to compose using Reaper and wave notes. So you just heard an example there. So the melody line here goes. Doo. Do, 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 do. So what we did over here is we generated by using semitone shifts. We generated by using semitone shifts. We had the notes E2 to E4. We, in the last episode, jumped them up and down an octave. So we're going from E one to E5, and we have something we would call the a two octave chorus. And then we started snipping them out, and this is what we've come up with. Number four. <laughs> well, first of all, we'll just play this. Here's the F. Duh, and the B flat. If we play the octaves here. Ba, ba. So that's the first part of this. So in any event, let's just play the whole thing for you. Just to make it clear, that is exactly the first line of this composition, which is called Between the Lines 2. But it doesn't sound the same at all. And we like it. So um, we basically flipped octaves, the A and the A octave, like that. In doing this, we realized that it would be possible, it would be possible to, uh, to take our reaper.wave notes that you just saw in there and make an instrument pat from MuseScore. And then we actually found a, a tutorial on it over here. There's a tutorial on how to create and use a custom sound font. Um, and we actually played that. It was uh, bird whistle instruments. It was kind of funky. But this inspired us to go back to our between the lines. And what we've done is we've added ornamentation lines. And we were also experimenting with something called arch form structure, a structure based on repetition in reverse order such that the overall form is symmetric. There's kind of a central point and the sections don't have to be exactly the same, but they should have similar thematic material. So we're going to play for you 
this version of Between the Lines, which has been christened number three, and you'll see that it has added two ornamentation parts. If you compare this part here, stop soloing it. This sounds like this. So that has a piano melody and a synthesizer cadence, but this is going to be, well, we'll play it for you. Here we go. And that concludes today's stream. What we like about this piece is the um, arch form structure, which we were reading about in a, actually a fiction book, one of our favorite fiction books. And we said, well, what does that arch form mean anyway? We looked it up and you saw the results. We like adding the ornamentation. Uh, it's kind of a new way to add it with the da -da 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 -da. So it's a syncopation ornamentation. And then we still went ahead and did triplets. So our ideas for a next time are to, well, basically to be determined, but we could make a sound font using our voice samples. There's a tutorial. We could go back to our heptatonic number two, and we could make a brand new composition with a new theme. Uh, and we could do a to be determined. Shout outs to Mickey Motrika and Qualify for stopping by. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back and please do keep on streaming.